How's it going everyone? This is Zach. Welcome to the Last Llama Gaming Channel. I am back with another build for Warhammer Chaos Bane. Today I have a build for the Dwarf. So he's my final character. I've already made builds and leveled up all the other ones. So I figured I needed to complete the set. So I power leveled them up. I farmed some heroic gear. This is the first set I have completed. It is the last song set. So this is going to be a bleed build. So I'm going to walk you through the gear, how to bless the gear, the passives and skills show you the god tree and then i'll show you some gameplay and a boss fight so let's get right into it all right guys so getting into the gear we have the last song set so this is a bleed set it increases bleed damage as you can see right here the passive for the armor set is called avenger bleeding enemies are slowed and take more damage so bleeding enemies are going to take 300 percent more damage and the cleaver skill is improved and no longer requires skill points to equip so the stats on the armor you're going to want to keep an eye out for other than armor or health is cooldown reduction, cost reduction, critical hit damage, or critical hit chance. So getting into the weapons, I have the last fight equipped. In combat, health is permanently lost, but critical hit damage is increased. Now it doesn't actually drain your health by that much a second, it just decreases how fast your health regains, but I think that's a fair trade off for that 100% critical hit damage. And as you'll see, this build has a ton of survivability. So that health regeneration isn't gonna negatively impact you that much. Over here, I have the last sleep. Now, I do have a lot of these last fights that give you that 100% extra critical hit damage, but to be honest with you guys, I can't tell if it stacks. I would assume it stacks, so if you have two last fights, you would get 200% critical hit damage. But for whatever reason, this last sleep gives me higher damage than if I equip another last fight. So I don't know the details of all of that but i recommend if you have a last sleep and a couple last fights try try out two last fights and see what your damage is like and then switch one out for the last sleep and see for yourself which one gives you more damage but as far as my experience and my gameplay goes this just pumps out more damage i'm not quite sure why all right so getting into the rings i have an insulation ring as well as a fiery ring of thori so the fiery ring is going to give me a chance to reduce cooldowns on critical hits now this is a very good ring i recommend at least having one of these on but if you're only going off of this skill but your stats on the ring are not very good it may be better to prioritize another ring with better stats like i don't necessarily need the passive on this ring the performing a critical hit has a chance to grant health and energy i mean that's a fine passive but it's not essential i'm really keeping this ring on for that critical hit chance and the extra damage so you do have some leniency on your rings. And then the amulet you're going to want to equip is the mountain pendant. Hitting an enemy has a chance to reduce the current cooldown and great energy. And I just got lucky to have very good stats on this one. Armor, damage, critical hit chance. This is a very good roll for this one. Alright guys, so getting into the blessings. As you can see, I have critical hit chance and flat damage on every single item. So I have 0.6% critical hit chance and 175 damage. I will go ahead and show you how to bless this because each character's bless blessing screen is different. I'm not quite sure why it makes it kind of confusing for you to figure out when you first switch to a new character. Okay so this is the setup you're going to want. You're going to want a red and a green linked right here for your critical hit chance and then you're going to want an orange or red one of these two gems in your other slots to give you the flat damage. So just do that on all of your items and you will be all set. Alright, so now getting into the skills, now there are some slight variations between things like relic hunts and expeditions as compared to boss fights, but it's very minor, it's just switching out a couple passives and skills. So I will show you that, but this is for mob clearing, so this is going to be your build for relic hunts or expeditions or invasions. So coming up here to the top, we have Axe Throw Superior. This is purely for that extra range you get for fighting bosses if you don't want to be up on them. Uh, you can keep your distance and still pump out a lot of damage as well as it inflicts bleeding which is imperative for this build next up we have shred mastered now this also inflicts bleeding and it ties in with our god skill down here this is going to be your main damage dealing source and i know that physical damage is a lot lower than other skills but it does a ton with this build and you can spam it and it's going to keep you alive by restoring your health Next up we have Cleaver, Heroic, Lash Out with Dual Sweeping Blows that inflict bleeding on enemies and heal for each enemy hit. So this does a ton of physical damage. It does have a very short cooldown, 
four seconds on my build but it cools down faster than that in game and it's going to restore your health adding to your survivability as well as inflicting bleed now if you remember the passive for our armor set is bleeding enemies take 300 percent damage that's why these three skills all inflict bleed so we are ensuring that all the enemies we are fighting have bleed procced on them so we're getting that extra damage bonus and then i have avenging charge this is just a mobility skill if you need to get in and out of fights uh, the mini bosses that blow up after you kill them this is just a quick way to get out i always have a mobility skill on all of my characters one of the best skills in the build strike of the anvil mastered so this is your leap this one has a much lower cooldown than its lower versions so as you can see the master version has a four second cooldown compared to the other ones that have an eight second cooldown and this also decreases cooldown based on rage level so you're going to want to be spamming this as much as it's up because it does a ton of damage and it's a mobility skill that allows you to close the distance very quickly and then probably the most important ability for this build is ancestors gift mastered become invulnerable and use skills without consuming energy attacks deal bonus fire damage during the effect duration it has a 14 second cooldown but it's active for four seconds so really it's a 10 second cooldown at max but with all the extra cooldown reduction you're getting this is up pretty often almost constantly when you're in fights and you're going to be killing stuff so fast that it's only going to take one or two uses of this ability before the fight is over now i picked the master version because that extra fire damage adds a lot of damage onto your abilities you could get away with using the lower ones uh, this is just personal preference for me i like that extra damage you're not spamming this when you're at low health you're spamming this when it is up the superior version uh, you have to activate it when health is low to get that bonus so you're not going to be getting that bonus a lot this is just a constant bonus you're going to get every time you use it. Getting into the passives, we have Eternal Grudge Superior. Rage lasts longer and is more effective. No need to explain this one, this is just good for pretty much every build for him. Up next we have Deep Gashes Superior. Bleeding deals more damage and even more to moving enemies. This is a bleed build, we'll take all the bleed damage we can get. Blood of the Dawi Superior. The lower your health, the less damage taken, and the longer the duration of rage. This is just to extend the rage duration so we have it up as long as possible. And to increase our survivability. Trail of Blood Mastered. Bleeding enemies take more damage, and damage increases based on the number of nearby bleeding enemies. Now this is one of the passives that you're going to change for boss fights, because obviously you're not going to have a lot of bleeding enemies nearby when you're fighting a boss. But for mobs, this is very good because there's going to be a ton of bleeding enemies around you. And then I have the Blessed Talisman equipped, crit chance plus 5%. It's a free skill. As you can see, I am used almost all of my skill points, so this is just an extra bonus right here. And if you don't have this yet, it shouldn't take you too long, just farm some heroic gear, it's a pretty early level for the collector's guild. And then lastly I have Spiked Smite, grants a damage bonus against enemies with low health. So enemies below 30% health are going to take an extra 20% damage. Obviously this is going to be useful for every enemy, that extra damage bonus is just going to help you finish them off that much faster and move on to the next enemy. And you know now that I think about it, I mentioned you could change this build up for bosses and mobs. You know, it works fine either way. It's really going to come down to how optimized you want to be. I'm just going to use this same build I have set up right here for the boss fight and the mob fights. If you want to tweak it a little bit from this, you can, but as you'll see, it's going to be effective either way. All right, guys, so getting into the God skill tree, you're going to start right here in the middle. Take this path over to Ancestor's Gift Mastered. Now you're going to pick up a lot of maximum health on your way over here just to increase your survivability and then also branch off up into this little path right here to get some extra cooldown reduction. Now you could go down this path to get the extra cooldown reduction but I don't think it's completely necessary for this build. The cooldowns are already pretty short. If you were using the Mountain's Wrath skill you could take this path for the extra cooldown reduction but the times on these are already so low it's not necessary to go down this way. I recommend going to your left here to get the extra damage and critical hit damage since this is a critical hit and critical damage focused build. Come down here to get the extra critical damage even though you're taking minus 10% maximum health you're getting 
enough maximum health from this side over here to counteract this and then keep going down this path now i solely go down this path to get as much critical damage as possible so you're going to end right here on this last critical damage node and as you can see over here we're getting 175 percent extra critical damage plus 20 percent damage and a couple defensive skills as well as five percent cooldown reduction so coming over to our stats i have about 41 percent critical hit chance pretty good uh, you're going to be critting a lot with this build if you focus on critical hit chance. And as you can see, I have a lot of critical damage. So we are going to be doing a lot of damage with our abilities. If you come down, you can see I have roughly 28% cooldown reduction. So we're not completely focusing on cooldown reduction. We just want a decent amount to make our skills usable on a fairly frequent basis. But you don't need to completely max it out for this build. Alright guys, so let's get into some gameplay. As you can see, we are on Chaos Difficulty 3. So, the skill rotation for this build is you're going to want to just, when you get close to enemies, you're going to want to leap. Cast your Ancestor's Gift, and then spam Shred. So once it runs out, you're not going to be able to use Shred anymore, unless you have some energy built up. So once that runs out, you can use W for your Cleaver. That's going to heal you, as well as do a ton of damage and inflict bleed. And yeah, that's pretty much your rotation. You're going to want to spam your Shred, Strike of the Anvil, Ancestor's Gift, and Cleaver. Use Avenging Charge to get in and out of situations. And use your Axe Throw to cause bleed, as well as regain energy. So this is a good build for players who like to be real active with their build. You're using all of your abilities for the most part. You gotta focus on your health and the damage you're doing in the order of your abilities to make sure you are inflicting bleed and then attacking to get the increased 300% damage. Whereas compared to some of his other builds, the fire damage builds, you kinda just hit your ability and then the fire damage takes them down over time. It's more of a passive build. So if you're a player who likes a more active approach to your builds, this is a good build for you. It's fun to play. It's challenging to play sometimes, but I really enjoy it and I think it's a fun and effective build. Alright guys, and to end the video, we're going to be fighting the Lord of Change on Chaos 3 difficulty. You're going to get to see how much damage I do and how fast I kill him, as well as the strategy I use. So that is going to be it for my commentary. If you made it this far, I would like to thank you for watching. Consider leaving a like if you enjoyed the build, as well as subscribing for more Warhammer Chaos Bane character builds and updates, as well as more gaming content in the future. And I will see you in the next video.